Hi everyone! Today I'm going to be talking about populations and the factors that cause them to change, to grow or decrease. Um, if you recall from previous weeks, a population is a group of the same type of organism that lives in the same place. So one species that lives in an area um, large enough for them to reproduce. So if they can interact, they're still in the same population. So first, let's try and do a little brainstorming on what factors you think cause population size to change. What are the things that can change a population size? That's what we'll be learning about today. So before we get into, into the different factors, I just want to talk about some different types of growth. So we've got positive growth and negative growth. So positive growth. Right, if you think positive, like a plus sign, right, means to increase. So a net, not next, sorry, a net overall increase in population size. So for example, um, total penguin population is 122 at the beginning of the year, and at the end of the year it's 235. So that was a positive growth, overall increase in growth. Okay? Um, negative growth is the opposite, right? Negative, if you think minus sign, means to decrease or to go down, to subtract. So that shows a net overall decrease in population size. So for this example, we've got total number of penguins is at 1,200 at the beginning of the year, and at the end of the year, it's at 800. Okay, so we had a net decrease. That's called negative growth. Positive increase, negative decrease easy way to remember it. So now let's look at some factors that affect population size. First of all, things that can increase population size, you might have guessed, are immigration, right? So moving into an area. So let's say these two populations are separated by some kind of barrier, maybe they're in different lakes, and then one day there's a flood and uh, the river swells and uh, some fish from one population can make their way to another population. So that's immigration, moving into an area. Think immigration in. Both start with I. Um, or birth, right? Reproduction. So if organisms are healthy and they're having more babies, that's also going to increase the number of organisms. Increases population. Decrease population, um, things that decrease population are emigration, and if you think E for exit, right, exiting a population, are when organisms move out of an area. They leave an area, or leave a population, um, or death, right, when they die, obviously the number in the population decreases. Okay, so if we look at this image here, kind of helps us to understand a little bit. We've got a fish population. Ways we can increase, two ways, that's it. Birth, when the organisms reproduce, or when other organisms from neighboring populations immigrate in. So immigration and birth increase population size. Death and emigration decrease population size. Here's another image of the same thing. This is another popular image you might see if you use Google, right? We've got a population of birds. Things that are adding to the population are births and immigration. Things that are decreasing population size, deaths and emigration. Another important term when talking about population size is called carrying capacity. And I like to think of it as it's um, how much the environment can carry, the capacity at which the environment can carry. Okay, so carrying capacity is the largest population size an environment can support, can carry. Okay, so for example, um, if you look at this green, right, this green represents this sheep population, and at some point, they can increase and increase and increase, but there's always going to be at a point where they can't increase anymore. 
So there's not enough resources in the environment to support that many organisms. Um, so there's not enough food, not enough water, not enough shelter, any of the resources that are available. So once they get to a certain point, um, that population can't go up any higher. They either run out of food, run out of water, they end up starving to death. That population is going to decrease back down. And then it will eventually kind of hover at this point, which is the carrying capacity. So that is the amount of organisms that the environment can support healthily. Um, another way to think of it is that's when the birth rate and death rate are fairly equal. That's when we get a stable population. So when the same amount are being born than dying. If a lot more are dying, a lot more individuals are dying, we're going to see a big decrease in population. If a lot more are being born, then we're going to see an increase in population. Eventually, that population will become stable, and that is when birth rate and death rate are about equal. Another important term that influences carrying capacity are called limiting factors. So these are the factors in the environment that prevent unlimited population growth. Prevent it from increasing forever, right? There's not enough resources to increase forever. So those resources are called limiting factors. So they, those are things that cause the population to decrease, to not increase forever. So some examples of factors that limit population growth Right, limit how big a population can get are things like available food, available water, living space, the amount of predators that are in the area, disease, weather, right? Weather is unpredictable. Okay, so these are all things that can cause populations to decrease, to not increase forever, right? We're always going to have these, these factors in our environment. All right, so let's look at an example of how populations are limited in the real world. So if we look at a population of deer, the population of deer in this environment is limited by the amount of water it receives. If there's a drought, so if there's no rain one year, the grass isn't gonna grow, the plants aren't gonna grow, and the deer are gonna have no food to eat. So their population would decrease, right? The older, organisms that aren't as strong are going to die. There's going to be less successful births. So the overall population will decrease. So there will be a negative growth in the population. Another important relationship that helps to keep populations in check is that predator-prey relationship. So predators are organisms that hunt and kill other organisms for food, while the prey organisms um, are organisms that are hunted and killed by the other organism, by the predator, right? So the predator is doing the killing, the lynx over here in this picture, the prey is getting eaten, right? So the rabbit. These populations are really important to balance out ecosystems. If there was no predator, of course, yeah, the bunnies will be happy for a little while until they're, they increase so much that they run out of food. Right, they have a limited amount of food available, especially in this Arctic environment, to support a population of rabbits. So um, the predators help to keep the rabbits in check so that they don't increase to a point where they end up dying of starvation instead of dying from being hunted. Same thing here, we've got a shark is the predator, seal is the prey. They keep each other in balance. And then we've got another example down here, cheetah, and I think that's an impala. And if we look at some graphs, and we're going to be looking at a lot of graphs this week as we talk about population changes, we've got wolf population. So wolf would be the predator, and most predator-prey cycles look like this. So we've got the predator down here, right? Predators have a smaller population number than the prey, right? Because wolves have to eat every couple days. So there's going to be more wolf, less wolves than there are prey species. So the rabbit population is here in blue. So as the rabbits, if you look at the relation between the two, as rabbits increase, right? So from 
whatever this is, zero to, I don't know, six maybe. These are years at the bottom, I would think. From year zero to year six, the rabbits have a drastic increase in population. Let's also look at what happens to the wolves in that time frame. As the rabbits increase, the wolves increase, right? Why might wolves be increasing when there are more prey available? Yeah, there's more food, right? So they're not dying of starvation and they're healthy enough to reproduce. So they're going to increase in population size. But then at some point when there are a lot of wolves, what happens to the amount of rabbits, right? So it looks like year seven and eight here, we've got a high wolf population. When we have a high wolf population, we can see year seven and eight, there's a big decrease in the prey population. Okay, so when there's a lot of wolves, they're actively hunting a lot more rabbits, which is gonna cause a decrease. As the rabbits decrease, what happens to the wolves? They begin to decrease, right? Because there's less food available. Okay, so there's this like 10 year cycle of increases and decreases between predators and prey. And this is a natural cycle. This should be happening in a healthy ecosystem. Um, when we get into trouble is when we are altering ecosystems and removing predators that we have prey populations that get out of control and, and don't get checked like this, like they should. All right, now let's do some practice. So the graph on the right shows changes in the sizes of four animal populations over a 16 year period. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four different lines. We got a key down here, population one, two, three, four. In which population might the birth rate be very close to the death rate for all 16 years? Pause and think about this for a second. Right, so if, remember, birth rate causes increase, death rate causes decrease. So if birth rate and death rate are very close for all 16 years, what do we expect to see? We expect to see a line that's just barely kind of going up and down, up and down, up and down, fairly stable. Okay, so which line do we see that's fairly stable? Looks like this one here. This looks like population two. Okay, now let's look at another example. Which population reaches carrying capacity during year 12? Remember what carrying capacity is. That's when they reach, uh, population reaches its highest point that an environment can support, and then it'll eventually kind of go down and stable out. So what reaches its highest point before it starts to level out? looks like this solid line. It is going down here, but we're gonna assume it's probably gonna go back up and kind of even out. So this is population three, reaches carrying capacity at year 12. Last practice problem, which population might have a larger emigration rate than immigration rate for all 16 years? Remember, M migration with an E is to exit a population. So larger exiting, what would we expect to happen? A decrease, right? If more are exiting than entering. So we would expect a negative growth. So a decrease in population size for all 16 years. Which one's decreasing for all 16 years? Looks like this guy, population four. Okay, hopefully that helps, and if you have questions, please write them in the box. See you next time.